I'm Sue Yulens Mosovich from the product marketing team uh, for our, our new solution here. I am joined by several fantastic presenters. Uh, Vikram Bella Prakar, who is my, my partner in crime with the product marketing uh, of the solution. And we have Brian Dean, the technical marketing engineer, who's going to be going through quite a bit of the, the uh, more technical bits of the content. And Joanne Barbel, our senior director of PowerFlex Engineering. And uh, here we go with the name already, so we might as well go ahead and announce it. So PowerFlex is the powering up of the XFlex. It is a high-end software-defined storage solution uh, with a great deal of history. If you know the XFlex, or even if you know the Scale I/O days, uh, it has been—it's a very uh, proven solution. But we want to really reinforce uh, the investment that Dell is making into this solution. We're expanding uh, the messaging and the, the use cases for it. And we're going to be talking about how uh, we've also improved the product as we've continued to uh, to invest in it. Um, so I'd like to bring in Vikram Bella Prakar, my my partner in crime, as I said. Hi, Vikram. Hi, Sue. Thank you. So thanks very much for being here. Um, so we're we're going to talk about how PowerFlex really delivers better outcomes through the harnessing of the power of software. Um, we're looking for high-end performance for the workloads that are critical to business. We're looking for the mid-range simplicity, uh, the ability to manage and control the software, uh, not just in terms of the storage, but also for the uh, ITOM, the, the uh, lifecycle management and, and all of those related solutions uh, that support it. And also look for the modularity that we get from HCI. Uh, so that combination is really a sweet spot for where PowerFlex stands. Um, and, and it really delivers a great deal of better outcomes. By focusing on software, what are we able to do, right? So we're able to deliver this thing that, you know, with software, we're able to unlock uh, high performance. So you get a performance like a high-end storage. Because we, we are focused on software, you know, we can simplify lots of operations. So that's the mid-range simplicity you get with that. And because of the the use of industry standard nodes and industry standard server technologies, we can uh, we can be extremely modular, right? So uh, combination of all of the, these three, what does that mean for IT organizations? So this is really a great platform, uh, you know, agile platform for modernization sorts of projects, IT transformation, workload modernization. This platform really uh, serves in those sorts of uh, use cases. Yeah, and so uh, we talked about performance, and I think performance is one of the uh, easiest things you can quantify, right? So here are some, and we'll talk about how we deliver this performance throughout this presentation, uh, but some numbers here, right? So across the workload categories, because of our focus on software and because of uh, the way we are able to unlock the, the potential of hardware, we're able to deliver breakthrough performance across categories. Uh, Oracle databases or SaaS analytics or Cassandra uh, containerized databases across the board, whether it's containers or it's uh, bare metal or whether it's uh, it's an analytics or database, we are able to deliver this performance uh, because of the, the focus we have in software. Now, uh, this performance actually has real implications in terms of business, right? So this performance many times means better business execution, uh, in turn, meaning more revenue. So to give you a couple of examples, recently, uh, we uh, had a customer, uh, one of the one of our uh, one of the schools that's using PowerFlex. They were trying to ramp up their remote learning facility, uh, remote learning uh, operations as part of this uh, uh, pandemic happening. And with Power PowerFlex, they were able to essentially switch over to uh, remote learning overnight without any performance issues, and they were able able to remain competitive uh, uh, in the business when most of their uh, peers were not able to uh, carry on business for weeks at a time. So this is what the performance enables you to do: be in a business and execute on your mission. Another one uh, example would be uh, a retail chain uh, was, uh, you know, they were trying to ramp up their curbside pickup uh, operations in the wake of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, with PowerFlex, they were able to seamlessly scale that infrastructure without a glitch, right? So the performance was, uh, they were able to use that performance to enable new services and change the business uh, to, 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 to make sense in a new reality. So real implications because of this performance for our, our customers. So today we're going to go through uh, the product overview uh, a technical discussion. We're going to get a little bit more nitty gritty on how we do what we're talking about, how we get this performance. Uh, and we'll also have a live demonstration from our technical team, uh, from, uh, from Brian and Joanne. So throughout this whole session, we're going to talk about three basic tenets of what PowerFlex delivers. Uh, the ability to harness software, to embrace change, and to provide and deliver predictability for our business. And let's double click into what that means. So harnessing software, there we go. So harnessing software 
really talks about our massive IO performance and throughput, how we do that, how we scale from four to thousands of nodes. We've got customers in, in the thousands right now. Uh, and the fluidity to change the infrastructure as needed in response to the business without forklift upgrades or, or any of the, that kind of compromise that we would normally sometimes have to, to face. So, yeah, Jeffrey, can I, you talk a little bit about the performance piece? Yeah, even before that, just the, the harnessing power of software, right? The, the approach we are taking is we are able to leverage the rapid innovations in industry standard server technologies. Uh, we know that there's, there's rapid innovation going on there. We focus on software uh, to unlock, you know, what the hardware could uh, could deliver. And as a result, uh, unlock performance, unlock scalability, unlock, uh, you know, transformational fluidity in your, uh, in, in your IT environment. So from a uh, performance standpoint, what are we doing here? What you see here are a few nodes, uh, PowerFlex nodes. Each of these nodes run a small piece of software, PowerFlex software, that aggregates resources. Now, these resources are aggregated across all available nodes, the bandwidth, the IO, uh, IO potential, all of those are consolidated along the way. What it means is millions of IOPS with sub-millisecond latency with a really small, you know, modest sort of, sort of a footprint. You know, few nodes can get you millions of IOPS, real, uh, real uh, workloads doing performance uh, within a sub-millisecond latency. You, it also means we are aggregating throughput as, as the nodes are added to the cluster. So you have unrestricted throughput, uh, which is critical for applications like uh, analytics applications that have high ingest rates. So we can handle those requirements really well also. And lastly, the way the data is laid out on the underlying storage resources. So now in this cluster, you have four nodes. Each node has, let's say, 24 drives. You're looking at 90, 96 drives in just these uh, um, you know, uh, four nodes. We, we essentially you know, balance data placement across all of those drives. And the cluster can be as big as thousands of nodes, and we can still do that. And by doing so, we are able to eliminate any hotspots in the process. We are able to deliver seamless high IO performance with sub-millisecond latency uh, while making sure the throughput also scales as you're scaling the system. And that sort of takes us into the scaling of this system. So can you move? Yeah. So in terms of scaling, right, this system, uh, you can start uh, as, as small as four nodes. So it's a flexible starting point, as small as four nodes. And you can think of, you know, single workload that you have that you need to modernize uh, on, on a new, new, new agile infrastructure. You can start with that. But most often, you know, lots of other workloads follow that suite because of the performance and resiliency characteristics of the platform. And platform can seamlessly handle that. Now you have here four nodes. There are a certain number of CPU, memory, storage resources, and bandwidth that's being aggregated, you see on the right-hand side. But as you start scaling this infrastructure, the system essentially uh, adds new resources to the pool, balances the resources and the data placement on them. In the process, you're scaling essentially all the resources linearly. So you can start with a few nodes, you can incrementally scale, and you can scale to thousands of nodes uh, to, to support the application requirements or the scalability requirements without compromising performance, without complicating operations. Vikram, so, could you... Um, could you Tell us what front-end connectivity you're using for hosts in this uh, configuration, because I feel that has a bearing on your ability to distribute performance across those nodes evenly. Yes, so we are using Ethernet uh, uh, as, as, a, as a connectivity. We are not using iSCSI in the process. We have uh, uh, we we, ha uh, we we optimize the communication between the storage and the compute nodes with our own piece of software, right? And as a result, we are able to achieve much better performance in that. And I think Brian and Joanne are going to go into details in terms of how exactly we do that, how we distribute all of that data and how we eliminate all that. Okay, so just so to that qualify detail. that, there is a, there's a client on that front end? Uh, there, is a, there is a client and there is a server. Uh, your node, if it is, storing, uh, it, it is serving storage, uh, it will have a storage data server on it uh, that will make the storage available to the clients. Uh, the node can also be hosting applications. Uh, in that case, the, the node will have a storage data client that talks to the storage data servers uh, in the whole cluster, and uh, it's it's really you know many to many sort of a network that enables this you know bottleneck free IO transmission. Uh, okay, thanks. Me, uh, here. So if you need a client, uh, what are uh, the operating systems that you support uh, in the front? Uh, we have many uh, many many systems and operating platforms that that we support as the consumers of our storage, and Brian will get into those details specifically. Okay. Yeah, I mean, ranging from uh, you know Linux operating systems to hypervisors to uh, even all the way going back to AIX, you can have AIX as a consumer of our data. So from that standpoint, from consumption standpoint, we we enable a lot of flexibility, right? Lots of kind, kinds of clients and operating platforms can consume this storage. 
Okay, so mo moving on, the next element uh, that we enable by focusing on software is the fluidity. Um, and that has many applications. Uh, so in this scenario, so again, the same cluster here. Now, by, you know, by focusing on software, we're really able to separate the data from the hardware. Uh, you essentially don't have to touch your data ever. You never have to migrate data. There are no brute force copies involved. Uh, you know, you, you want to upgrade to new technologies, you want to change the nodes, you want to remove the nodes or add new nodes. Uh, it can all be done without any impact on uh, data or the applications. So in this case, you see one of the nodes in the cluster is reaching end of service life. It's as simple as removing that node from the cluster. And when you do that, system balances itself. So when you remove the node, system will balance itself and it'll keep going. Uh, as it balances, uh, the, the applications do not see any glitch in performance. The users do not see any uh, uh, issues with the user experience. And you, and you add a new node and system rebalances itself again. Uh, so it's as simple as that. The data never saw any changes on the hardware or the application never saw any changes in the hardware. Same thing if you want to upgrade hardware or same thing if you are looking to you know, you're looking for a planned outage or if there's an unplanned outage that happened in your uh, environment, no impact on application whatsoever. And you can easily recover from that by just correcting what were the failure. Applications keep going, users keep going. So, you know, many insta installations we have in the field, they, they run hundreds and hundreds of nodes and they are essentially performing nonstop year over year. And they're supporting one of those, you know, some, of, some of the most critical you know, demanding, you know, database sorts of application for uh, largest of the customers, right? And so this, this system is able to do that nonstop uh, year over year and deliver that resilience and deliver that, you know, ability to modernize without having to compromise, without having to worry about brute force data copies or data migration. So moving on to embracing change and what does that really mean here? Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, it's the uh, ability to disaggregate, uh, deployment architectures uh, do to choose different platforms to support it, be it virtual, be it bare metal, be it containerized, uh, and then consumption options. We have a variety of ways to consume the software uh, at a rack scale, at an appliance level, uh, and pretty much anywhere in between to ensure that the customer has the kind of networking, the kind of experience that they prefer. So, Going into deployment architectures, Vikram, can you touch on some of this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we 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 support flexible deployment architectures. I'm going to explain you what are those deployment deployment architectures and when it matters. And then Brian and Joanne will go into more details in terms of how that really is done on the back end. But uh, fundamentally, you know, disaggregated or two layer. This is where we see predominantly our customers using our platform. Disaggregated two layer uh, infrastructure. So in this uh, in this model, you have your compute nodes and you have your storage nodes. The top nodes are compute nodes that are hosting applications. And the storage nodes are the one at the bottom, yellow ones that are hosting data set. Think of a classic application like Oracle database. The Oracle application is running on the blue nodes up there. Oracle data sets, the volumes, are actually on the, the green nodes. So now you have you know, disaggregated your compute resources from your storage resources in this software-defined model. Uh, and the reasons for doing that, uh, you know, performance-sensitive applications, you may benefit from, from isolating applications from storage performance in order to be more predictable in how you deliver services. That may be one reason. Another reason maybe, and in many cases, very, very important would be licensing. By having a disaggregated model like that, you can minimize the CPU exposure for certain applications like Oracle, for example. And then you can minimize licensing expenses in many times, the reduction in those licensing exp expenses because you can separate the CPUs is, you know, uh, is as big as the total cost of infrastructure. So it's a, it's a considerable cost saving for our customers uh, if they're going with a disaggregated model for those sorts of applications. Lastly, from maintenance standpoint, separating compute and storage may allow you greater flexibility in terms of how you upgrade and patch the, the systems and the platforms. Uh, so those are some other reasons. What you see in the middle here uh, is, is, is another model that we support, which is called single layer or HCI model. In this model, each of the nodes can uh, it, it host data as well as host applications. They're serving data as well as applications. Volume are on every single node distributed. Applications are also distributed across every single node. Now we've seen this sort of model would be very useful for a customer who's looking at general consolidation, tier two workloads, Microsoft uh, uh, applications, those sorts of things, uh, which may not be extremely performance critical and, and highly, highly important for business, but they help run the business, so tier two workloads. So you cool. can do... I'm a little confused by messaging between the last presentation with the power store folks and now with this. 
the power store on surface architecturally looks very similar to the HCI single layer model. Obviously, it doesn't scale out to the size of the uh, power uh, flex. But why are you guys calling this HCI and you're very careful not to call power store HCI? I'm, I'm confused on on categorizing one and not the other. Yeah, so I think uh, part of that may be that the way PowerFlex is, uh, PowerStore is able to accommodate applications on data sets are, are, I think there are limited use cases they can do that on. It's apps on functionality, yeah, I think it's usually, I'm not a PowerStore expert, by the way, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's usually useful on the edge, uh, I feel, uh, where apps on could be, you know, you can have applications hosted on the edge alongside data without having more infrastructures to support those, right? Uh, we are in this case we can we can do that with one year nodes, but we also can do it in the core. We can we can deploy a uh, high density applications from CPU RAM footprint uh, that have extensive uh, data data performance requirements, right? So we can do all of those things uh, for your core applications in your core data center along with on the edge. And and I think the fundamental difference come down to you know uh, the scale at which these platforms can operate. This platform is designed to have massive scalability and to be able to perform at that massive scale. Uh, so that I think uh, those some, some of the use cases uh, may be different because of those things. Uh, I'd say, Keith, I wouldn't actually say there's a lot of difference other than the scalability, perhaps. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's working in a similar fashion. There's virtualized storage somewhere sitting on each node, whether that's a separate partition in, the te in Power Store or whether that's a bit of client software in the case of this. It seems to me that they're similar if it's not just for the scale capability. Yeah, that, that's my, that's kind of my perspective too. Very similar in approach, just scale. Is, this is obviously data center uh, enterprise scale, while the other one is more of a mid market solution, but still architecturally is the very there similar. Are, I, I would hold that thought. So Joanne and Brian are going to go into technical architectural deep dive. You will look at how we manage data path, how we manage network, uh, how we manage resiliency, all of those things. Uh, the, the details yeah, behind all, our architecture. All things are different. I, I, I no doubt that you know different. You're serving different markets, but conceptually, the approach is is identical. Yes. Just yeah, identical. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the customers across the board, from small businesses all the way to large enterprise, have a need for HCI sort of a model. Have a need for a, a two layer sort of a model, right? It's, it depends on what market you're serving and is your platform optimized for that market. Uh, we are. We are. We, yeah. Sorry, Vikram, may I just add one little part to that? I think um, we, one thing we may be missing here is the fact that power stores are, is a fixed architecture in terms of you pick a model and then you go with that model and that's it. In yes. this architecture, you're talking about scalability from adding both compute and storage as, a, as extra nodes into that architecture. So you've Absolutely. got a different layer of scale here compared to the way that power store is doing it. And when power store does it, it does it not necessarily at the moment in that um, it can't scale um, out with the um, the hybrid model. It can only scale out with the traditional right. storage model. So you've Another, got a very different, different scalability um, uh, construct there, I think, going on. Absolutely. Yes. And another thing I would note is just the, just the hardware that we're using for this. Mm -hmm. Power Store, although it uses x86 hardware, uh, it is a purpose-built hardware, right? We, we are, for the most part, using off-the-shelf uh, hardware and optimizing software to exploit the hardware. So there are, there are different models. Our controllers, for example, scale as you add more nodes. Every node becomes a controller. Uh, in PowerStore, I guess you have you have a, a front-end controllers and you can add disk trays. Uh, we're not that's not the model we are doing. So there are fundamental differences in how we build it and how we scale it. Uh, you know, from from customer standpoint, we need to be able to address their needs around uh, you know disaggregated uh, applications and data, or being able to uh, deploy a hyperconverged. But I think we are serving different performance requirements, different scale. Uh, requirements in the process and the architectures are different to address those needs. I'm sorry, it, seems I mean, it seems to me that um, the power store was more they've got the capability to let you run a few VMs on a storage controller, albeit it is x86, whereas this is um, software defined, it is um, hyper converged. I, I can see the, the difference between those two use cases and, and probably why they're avoiding to use the word hyper converged with. Um, power store because I think people will say very quickly, hold on a minute, I can't add multiple things to it. You can only run limited numbers of VMs to it, et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in this yeah. case, right, the, the middle block here, hyperconverged, you can run a very demanding Oracle on this. It's, it has the resources to handle that. 
it's not just made for uh, you know light workloads on the edge. Uh, it can be in your core, okay. running data and and applications on same nodes. So Vikram, yeah. you said that um, you, one of the distinctions you made is that PowerStore has um, purpose-built hardware. So how is this sold? Is this sold as a traditional type storage array, or is this something that I can put on any type of server that I can I put it on other servers than Dell servers? We, we'll go through that. Yes, we we do have different models to consume that. Uh, there are a couple of models where we can, you know, uh, ensure that the customers receive a uh, consistent experience, right? So we have appliances and we have rack to do that, but there are other consumption options for customers and who want more flexibility. Another question about, uh, you know, resource consumption. So we we know uh, from PowerStore that they, you know, reserve 50% of the CPU power for virtual machines, okay? So uh, how much the storage layer uh cuts out of the uh, raw performance that i have on a on a server or what is the minimal resources that i need to configure an hci configuration yeah so i i know it's a very lightweight i don't know the exact number but brian and joanne could you comment i can toss in a couple comments here um one thing that might clarify some confusion about this slide is that powerflex itself is first this powerflex software defined storage layer um, and then that gets implemented on x86 servers over an Ethernet fabric in different deployment models. So it's just a matter, we'll see in a bit, Joe goes th and goes through it, about how this gets installed to create these architectures. There's nothing special about the underlying hardware here. Um, now, as far as how much the uh, utilization goes, partly depends on the CPU and RAM you have in the node. So. You know, we can have a very lightweight thing that's only serving storage. It's a single socket CPU and a lot less RAM. We're going to use percentage-wise a good bit more of that. But if you've got a fully stocked, you know, Xeon Gold dual socket thing packed full of RAM, we're only going to use 10 to 20% of that uh, if you're running uh, this as a HCI type architecture. And when we say HCI, when we say controller, sometimes put those in scare quotes um, because we're using those as familiar things, but more like analogies. So HCI, I mean, uh, the software runs on Linux, right? So it's uh, not a lot of things actually. Um, we have, we'll get to this a bit later. I don't want to get too far in it, but it yeah. can run in bare metal Linux of different varieties. He's got it here. It can run in VMware um, in moderately similar to PowerScale's ideas. And it can uh, run- The operating system of, mm -hmm. uh, of your platform, is it based on you? I mean, if I build an HCI configuration, okay, um, can I uh, run bare metal applications on top of it? For example, if I have Cassandra, yeah. Can I use Cassandra yes. directly on top of the operating system, yeah. or do I need another virtualization layer on top of it? And so, for example, uh, last year at Dell Technologies World, we had a live demo on the show floor. It was six R640 based units, so very small, ten drives in each. Uh, we were running uh, an Oracle Rack database, pushing you know well over a million 8K IOPS at sub millisecond latency. And the total utilization of the software-defined storage layers, as well as Oracle Rack on top of all that, was only about 40% of the system. 40%. And that's oh. all bare metal. Like that's that's Oracle Rack running on Red Hat bare metal and all of our software running directly on Red Hat. So I guess this is, uh, in, we're coming to the point where this vertical integration is starting to get a little bit confusing. So you guys are have to do a little education on, on me. Is this the evolution of scale IO? Help me understand, like, is this scale IO in the appliance model of scale, scale IO in an appliance model? What What is this exactly? So it is. Uh, so it, the, just to give you some history on this, right? So this product was known as Scale.io. It was sold as a software-only uh, product back then. Uh, it became uh, VxFlex. Scale.io became VxFlex, and we started up, uh, offering appliances rack and rack in that form factor with that, with that name. And it is now, you know, we realized that this aggregated architecture is where customers see the most value, and it's really a software-defined storage uh, from customer standpoint. Uh, and that that's the evolution of the product. So yes, uh, it 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 has all the features and capabilities that you heard about Scale.io. 
So um, to the question about you know uh, who can consume uh, this storage and what what platforms we can use. So you can see here pretty broad platform support, and you can mix and match this. You know you can have bare metal. And, uh, and virtualized environments, uh, uh, you know, in one deployment, you can have multiple hypervisors supported in that. You can have containerized applications on that. So, I mean, your one single uh, infrastructure platform now can handle, uh, let's say, an Oracle sitting on Red Hat uh, Linux, all the way to Cassandra sitting on uh, uh, OpenStack. And so, you have a platform that can do legacy architectures, multiple hypervisors, uh, uh, virtualized uh, applications, as well as containerized applications, right? So, you, there is absolutely from from architecture standpoint, you can have for the applications that require disaggregation, you have that capability. Applications that benefit from HCI, you have that capability. You can mix it from our infrastructure architecture standpoint. But from application architecture standpoint, now again, on top of that, you can lay out all the way from bare metal to containerized, right? So no application is really off limit. If it requires performance, if it requ requires scalability, we support that application across the board. And uh, as many of our customers, what they're doing now is they are in the process of modernizing their applications and they don't want to change the platform. Uh, and so this is a perfect platform for them to move the application architecture, whether from bare metal to virtualized or from virtualized to containerized uh, without having to change the platform. And the platform can scale limitlessly too. Um, so to, just to make sure I'm clear, effectively you choose your own operating system and then the PowerFlex software is deployed as VMs on top of whichever hypervisor or, or operating system you are picking. That's right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Vikram, a, a quick question on the um, on that implementation. Uh, you may get into this, but just to sort of set the frame, if you do get into it, when we talk about it, my assumption is that you're you're mapping some sort of device, local device on the client, or it looks like a local device on the client, but in the background, your software is actually doing the translation to where the physical data is sitting across the the, the suite of nodes that you're actually storing that data on. Now, assuming that's the case and there's some metadata stored somewhere, I think it would be good to understand where the metadata is, but also um, exactly that what that process is, because I think when we look at some of the platforms that are on the uh, left-hand side of this, we might say that these environments don't change their configuration very often. But as we, sw as we move over to the right-hand side and we see Kubernetes and Anthos and OpenShift, we may have configurations where LUNs are created continuously and there may be hundreds of LUNs created every hour and that's a very big difference in terms of metadata updates and yes. when you've got many clients that may be a challenge so it'd be good to understand it in that context when we get to it yes we will cover that so that's part of you know how, how we are managing metadata and how we're making sure uh, that it doesn't become a performance bottleneck uh, Brian's going to cover that too okay thank you okay um, so in terms of consumption options uh, of course, the PowerFlex software is really the heart of, of the solution, uh, and all of these can be consumed, or PowerFlex can be consumed in a variety of ways. So if a customer really wants a, a rack-scale solution, a white-glove deployment, uh, PowerFlex rack is, you know, integrates all of the networking uh, at rack scale, comes completely configured, and, and is ready to place into the data center. And if a customer prefers to use their own existing networking, we have the appliance that can be placed right into the existing networking infrastructure, one U and two U uh, style nodes, and uh, and can scale just as well. It's just that the networking is managed um, of the customer from the customer site. But beyond just you know the PowerFlex software managing the storage infrastructure uh, that we've been talking about, PowerFlex Manager is a solution that comes with the rack and the appliance and it allows uh, to do IT operations management, lifecycle management, all the BIOS and firmware upgrades, but it also automates work streams uh, and does uh, third-party uh, APIs and, uh, and CSI as well. So we're able to essentially manage everything else uh, beyond just the software by using PowerFlex Manager. Uh, and yeah. that again is in uh, Appliance and Rec. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. Just, just one thing. I mean, it may not be obvious because we are talking about storage here, right? So, PowerFlex Manager, uh, a tool for your IT operations and lifecycle management. It, it just, it doesn't just look after your storage nodes. It looks after the entire infrastructure. You may have compute nodes in a disaggregated uh, environment and storage nodes, and you have networking as part of that, stitching it all together. Right. You can manage the entire thing uh, uh, as one single infrastructure with PowerFlex Manager. You know, automate lifecycle management, automate infrastructure workflows. So you're not confined to storage. You're looking at this thing as a holistic infrastructure supporting your workloads. 
So uh, another question. So do you have any integration with Cloud IQ then? I mean, uh, PowerFlex Manager is uh, is the management interface for the PowerFlex, but all other products from Dell EMC storage are now integrated with Cloud IQ. That that okay. will be coming soon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so quickly, we'll, we'll, we'll go through deliver predictability uh, with regard to the data services that we provide, um, how we automate uh, processes using, for example, uh, PowerFlex Manager, and then some workload execution as well. Um, and I know uh, this is just a short list of the data services that are available, but we wanted to highlight the fact that in this new release, uh, we have now, uh, we're releasing native asynchronous replication uh, and secure snapshots. And those are really specific to things that our customers have requested and we're responding to, um, providing, especially the secure snapshots, we're really excited to be able to uh, provide that to the vertical markets that really require that security. Um, then pre oh, provisioning, uh, yes. Yeah. Could you explain what secure snapshots are versus insecure snapshots? I mean, <laughs> well, they're unchangeable. You know, once they're oh, complete, immutable. it's almost like okay. yes, yes. So, designed for financial, designed for healthcare, any place Compliance that really requires kind of an things. unchanging, yeah, unchanging snapshots for a certain length of time. Um, once the time frame has has ended that you you define, uh, it is a changeable thing. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Or deletable. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing that uh, you know we're really proud of is that the fact uh, the the future proof program, which is a, brings a lot of value to our customers in terms of uh, making sure that they can continue to uh, modernize as they as we go forward in time. The future proof program is something that we're we're part of as well now. So PowerFlex Manager, we talked a little bit about that uh, a moment ago, uh, but it, it, the idea is to provide really a ro robust tool set that helps you automate all the IT operations and lifecycle management tasks, uh, and it. it really provides um, the automation of all of the tasks around storage and compute. So it's not just about the storage, it's, a, it's about making sure that the entire infrastructure is up to date and, and available. Um, it also provides templates that really orchestrate activities uh, across the infrastructure layers. So it boosts a lot of protect productivity by automating those procedures. Um, and finally, it provides the APIs to help you integrate PowerFlex infrastructure with DevOps, uh, cloud delivery workflows, and so on. So you'll see the CSI associated with Kubernetes in this case. Yeah, and I think as part of the demo, we're going to go over uh, some of the Flex Manager functionality as well. And this manager is included with PowerFlex, right? It's not like an additional. No, it is included. Right, for the, for the rack and the appliance, yes. Uh, it, now, we do still uh, have the VX Flex ready nodes that do still exist. And in that implementation type, uh, it does not come with the PowerFlex manager. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we're really leading with the appliance and the, the rack, uh, because there are some customers who would really prefer to manage it themselves. Uh, and ready nodes are a really good fit for that. But uh, if we want that full lifecycle management and, uh, and, and experience for the customer, the appliance and the rack are the way to go. Thanks. So uh, coming back to uh, workloads, right? I, th I think it's important to have a broad and validated uh, uh, ecosystem of workloads to, to deliver predictable outcomes, right? Customers eventually are looking for workloads. And so to that effect, we have invested for, for steadily over the last few years to build out this ecosystem. So you see in the middle, you know, all of the classic enterprise uh, business critical apps you, you have there. Uh, Epic, I would like to point out, we are, we are the only software defined platform that can support all elements of Epic, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not only the VDI, but also operational databases, analytics databases, we can do that too. Uh, Elastic Stack, uh, one of the leading and growing uh, analytics application in the containerized space, uh, it, we provide great performance there as well. So across the board, uh, you know, you've seen some of the performance stats, but we are optimized for these applications. In addition to that, on the left side, you see, uh, you know, cloud automation, container management frameworks, we have a great ecosystem for that as well. So customers can choose uh, whatever tool they need for automation, uh, we usually support that. On the, on the right-hand side, you see uh, Dell EMC's portfolio of solutions around uh, data protection, around security, right? So they, they work really hand-in-hand -hand seamlessly with PowerFlex. So with these things, the, 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 the cloud automation platforms and container management frameworks, the, the, the validated ecosystem of workloads and the peripheral security and data protection uh, sort of a D Dell EMC uh, solutions, we can uh, essentially meet all the mission critical requirements of these 
uh, large deployments. And just to go into some of the performance numbers again, yeah, just, just to repeat, right? So across the board, uh, great performance you've seen. Uh, Oracle uh, RAG, this was recently updated, 10 million IOPS in in uh, in, in uh, eight RU space, right? So it's not a massive amount of infrastructure to deliver that performance. Again, I'd like to uh, point out, whether it's a database or it's a, it's an analytics, we can deliver performance, whether it's IO or transactional workload or throughput oriented workload. We can do it whether it's a bare metal virtualized or containerized application, right? So any kind of application you get the similar sorts of performance, scalability, fluidity benefits across the board. And just uh, before we start our technical session, just, just to summarize, right? So harness the power of software, what we're able to do by focusing on software is really unlock the hardware to, to deliver massive performance, to deliver you know, a scale that, that can go up to thousands of nodes and to uh, deliver fluidity that allows you to modernize without compromise and you re really never have to touch your data for migration or brute force copies. Embrace change. We uh, enable uh, uh, organizations and customers to embrace change uh, by providing them an agile and flexible infrastructure, whether it's the, the architectures, infrastructure architectures that, they, that, that are most suitable for them or the operating platforms for their applications that are most applicable for them or the consumption options. We give them the flexibility and as a result, agility. And then from predictability standpoint, uh, the, the enterprise data services uh, uh, deliver consistency, consistency across your environments whether you're a cloud native environment or a bare metal environment, those services provide consistency there. Uh, additionally, the PowerFlex manager and other automation uh, that we uh, enable uh, enable you to conduct your IT operations in a more predictable, automated manner. And then lastly, the workload portfolio that we offer uh, provides uh, our customers a great ecosystem and, and, a, and a predictable outcome in, in, in terms.